Sidney Howard Gay, in this flashback in May, mid-May 1856, he, he describes this earlier, this first escape of Harriet Tubman, where she came back. But she didn't come here. I don't remember whether he makes it clear in his entry or not, but other sources, Sarah Bradford and, uh, and um, Sanborn make it clear that she came to Baltimore, but John Boley bought his wife here and then hid out and then sailed to Baltimore. That's what Franklin Sanborn said in 1863. But Sidney Howard Gay was writing in 1856, and he was obviously getting a recollection from 18, you know, you know Harriet Tubman, I'm assuming he never met her before 1856. I was going to ask you that. I don't know the answer to that. But I'm assuming he never met her before the entry in 1856. But what he said was that they hid out, for the woman hid out for 18 months in Dorchester County. That's mm -hmm. the phrase. I believe I'm correct on that. You have to check it. Mm -hmm. I think it said 18 months. Mm -hmm. And she sometimes lived in a boat on the river. Mm -hmm. And she usually lived in the woods. Mm -hmm. And she was pregnant. Mm -hmm. And so there, th th there's more in this Sidney Howard Gay thing mm -hmm. that make, how this movie cannot be made once your book comes out, I don't know. Because anybody <laughs> with, without, without our knowledge can see this, this, is, a, this is an incredible story yes. in its own right. Mm -hmm. So John Boley is figuring out, I guess, how to get her out of here. Mm -hmm. You know, he's got her safe from being sold. Mm -hmm. But don't forget, Harriet Tubman's brothers had been hiding in woods at different times, too. Mm -hmm. This is part of the whole story of, mm -hmm. of slaves um, not always doing what their master says, okay? Mm -hmm. um, Good, so because people used to just go in the woods for a while. Well, they did, because a lot of people were working in the woods. You had mm -hmm. a reason to go in the woods. You could okay. go in the woods, and then you not, might not come back, right? right. Uh -huh. You know, just like, uh, you know, people, some people in my family were supposed to go on a sailboat to go somewhere, and they stayed. Yeah. You know, they didn't come back again. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's different stories like that. But the... the, the answer your question about, yeah. um, did a gay know her before that? Yeah. I think it's possible. He did a lot of work before he worked the journal. You know, it's possible. And the way he writes that passage, it's almost as if he was familiar with her to me. I don't think it was a first encounter. I agree. It seemed awfully strange that he could have such a, an incredibly um, kind of real narrative type understanding of her life. Uh, to pick that up after a short interview in an office seemed beyond belief in, in its likelihood of accuracy. So I wondered that myself. When is the first entry for that to journal, by the way, date-wise? Do you know? Because we we didn't uh, we we didn't we never we never checked that. Um, no, I, I don't remember. You know, I don't. I didn't bring it with me. Yeah. You know, so I don't remember. See, that. see, the, but there's there's something it's, it's about not the exact beginning of the year. Okay. Yeah. But 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 the fact is that Harriet Tubman's major documentable escapes have always been between fifty four and fifty seven. 1854 and 57. Mm -hmm. She certainly did other things that are mentioned in passing, mm -hmm. but the ones that we've been able to focus on for this detail type conversation, like mm -hmm. we're having today, yes. is between, you know, between 1854 mm -hmm. and 57. Mm -hmm. And the last escape is taking her parents out. Mm -hmm. The question is, of course, what's the first uh, entry in Stills' journal for her? The first entry, well, he becomes the head of the Vigilance Committee. He'd been working there, and I think it was. Uh, 52 when he became the when he when he became the head of the the um, the Philadelphia Vigilance Committee I think the first entries are 53 or 54 I mean, for, 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 for the for journal itself for Do, well for Tubman the first entry see I'm getting confused between Thomas Garrett and Wilmington he there's letters of Thomas Garrett yeah. those first the first time he mentions Harriet Tubman is if Pat was here she'd know it in detail is definitely 1854, okay? And it seems to me that that the entry for in, in William Still is the three Ross brothers in December 1854 because there was no journal when Keziah ran away in 1850. There was no journal then. Okay, well, that's, that's the... But the question, the question is, there's he calls it Journal C. Mm -hmm. The only one that I ever saw, I used to live up there, and I went to the Historical Society of Pennsylvania, and all they have was Journal C. There were, but there was the implication was there were other journals, but this is the a, only one. Probably. Yeah, A, B, C, D, but this is the only one, mm -hmm. and it covered the period from, if I remember right, 1853 or 4 to 1860, 1858. 
something like that. I'm, I'm not sure about that. It's not nearly, it doesn't have nearly the narrative impact that Sidney Howard Gay's journal has. That's why the, 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 uh, the, the, um, the, the way Sidney Howard Gay wrote, it seems like almost he was writing from notes, you know what I mean? But, but it seemed unbelievably how accurate it is mm -hmm. in well, terms it's, of... It's, it's, the most, uh, it's the most exciting part of the journal for us. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah it's, it's an incredible story because mm -hmm. now, if, it, now we it would know, there's no reason for it not to be true, that John Boley hired somebody mm -hmm. to sail her to Baltimore. Mm -hmm. So the question is, who would she hire? Mm -hmm. Now that plays right into what we're focused on in this particular year, mm -hmm. the 160th anniversary of the escape of the three brothers. Okay. The, the question that we're focused on is, if she worked for the Thompsons during 1854, mm -hmm. but they were slaveholders, mm -hmm. were all of them in favor of slavery or were some of them divided? as family members. Mm -hmm. So we're going to get into that question when we go down here. Mm -hmm. The other question is the Stewarts, because we, we've already determined here, before Sidney Howard Gay, that the hiring out was everything in Harriet Tubman's family history. Mm -hmm. And the families they would be hired to would have been most likely mm -hmm. the Stewarts, the Thompsons, mm -hmm. or the Parkers, or the Harringtons. There's four different families mm -hmm. that you know, not going to be able to get into great detail mm -hmm. on each of them. But the the problem, I'm, I'm trying to bring the problem with John Boley into play because he's the one that bought his wife here. If you look at his life, do you know Okay. Now, in these Certificates of Freedom, we find this white man named John Stewart mm -hmm. that's identifying certain black people. And one of them is the mother of Keziah who ran away from here. Mm -hmm. and her name is Bina, mm -hmm. Bina Bowl. So we traced Bina mm -hmm. because John Stewart who we, you know, who the white family, I mean, I haven't told you all about why we believe this white man would have helped her, but it turns out that this Stewart family had owned Bina and they sold her and her children, including John Bowley, mm -hmm. the free black man, to their cousins. Okay, now I'm going to tell you more about that when we get further down. Mm -hmm. So there's a Stewart to Stewart connection on the Boley family. And Bina is still alive in the early 1850s. Mm -hmm. The John Stewart that we're going to be telling you we think is involved, I don't think Kate does, but we do. Mm -hmm. Okay, she, that John Stewart would have lived near where the Bowleys, let's put it this way, let me start over again, would have lived in that area that I showed you where Crocheron was, yeah. where I showed you where the oyster yeah. people from New Haven were coming, yeah. you know, that's the area, that's a different, this is the Chop Tank River, mm -hmm. and, and the other area is called the Nanny Coke River. Mm -hmm. And this one John Stewart lived on the Nanny Coke side, mm -hmm. and the other John Stewart lived on the okay. Chop Tank or Chesapeake side. Mm -hmm. And the James Stewart we're talking about is, is all in that Stewart family. So, th if, if there was ever a reason why we give Kate a pass on disagreeing on certain things is it's difficult for everybody to sort out the different white stewards mm -hmm. and who owned who when. Mm -hmm. Because if different members of the Stewart family owned, say, John Boley mm -hmm. and Bina Boley, then it might have an impact on what happened here, okay? See, our, our feeling is that from reading, this is Pat and me, from reading the journal, that the John Stewart, the one that identified Bina, the mother of Keziah, since he was sailing back and forth to Baltimore, mm -hmm. he did that. That's, that's their family story, the white family story. Mm -hmm. 
and they have one white family member who's dead now who left a bequest to the Maryland Historical Society to tell the story of her ancestor. Mm -hmm. And I was supposed to write the book and got into an argument about that, which I can tell you about another time. So the book's never been written, but the story that we're trying to tell you now is that the, the woman, Keziah, who was obviously the original, um, that was the first person that Harriet Tubman wanted to get out of slavery, mm -hmm. was Keziah. And our theory is that Harriet Tubman had this guilt feeling in her mind because she would know that when she ran away, mm -hmm. that somebody else was going to be sold in her place. Mm -hmm. See, we, we, this ethical question that comes out in the mm -hmm. Sidney Howard Gay thing, mm -hmm. there seems to be this strong ethical mm -hmm. impulse within this Ross family mm -hmm. that they're all responsible kind of. Mm -hmm. uh, for each other, each other and their employers and everything. It's, it's just mm -hmm. like, it's almost like, I don't know, it's like out of Shakespeare or something. It doesn't, mm -hmm. it doesn't fit any stereotype that we all had before. Mm -hmm. Um, and it, and so our, our belief is that he hired, based on Sidney Howard Gay's entry, that John Boley hired somebody and one likely person would be John Stewart, mm -hmm. the son of Levin, sailed to Baltimore and that if that's the correct hypothesis, then that John Stewart became a continuing facilitator for what Harriet Tubman is doing. Okay. And as a result, when the three brothers ran away, mm -hmm. they took names in recognition of of, the of, the, of those Stewarts. But the irony is that the other first cousins, mm -hmm. they're on the other side of the story because mm -hmm. they're vehemently pro-slavery. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that's why... So that's, James Stewart was the first cousin of John. The, the James Stewart that we're talking about um, right now was the first cousin of John. Mm -hmm. But uh, I didn't bring the genealogy along today on the Stewart family because it can, it can dominate entire conversations. Mm -hmm. Because there are many Jameses, many Levins, and many Johns. Mm -hmm. And those are the aliases that the three brothers choose. Mm -hmm. And there are people today within around the world that have been here, and they've said that they think three young black men would not be recognizing the people that helped them because that might help them get caught, mm -hmm. but they might have taken the people who they were pretending to be as good as, mm -hmm. and that would be the slaveholders that were thwarting their efforts. Mm -hmm. So the psychology of these young black men has been a debate going on in all bus tours that I've ever given here with younger African Americans because mm -hmm. they can't figure out which is the most likely hypothesis. Mm -hmm. um, so. I'm going to end that right there. Mm -hmm. um, but the Boley story is now changed because of the Sidney Howard Gay entry. Um, and Pat, my friend that couldn't be with you today, um, she wrote a skit for the black community group. We're going to go by the church they're preserving that deals with the uh, Bina Boley and John Boley and Keziah. And I'll tell you more about that when we get down there. Okay. 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 <laughs> So we're, we're sitting right now on the east side of uh, Stewart's Canal. The sign says Parsons Creek. We're on Route 16. And we're explaining the significance of Stewart's Canal um, in terms of the shipbuilding operation of Anthony Thompson. I'm sorry, the ship, and the, timber, the timbering operation of Anthony Thompson and the shipbuilding operation of Joseph Stewart. Okay. And I haven't explained the history of the Stewarts, but I'm going to come back on that at some point. Okay. Now... The, the interesting thing is that in the year 1854, which is when we have the first letters of Thomas Garrett, we have the first, the, the first reference to Harriet Tubman in William Still's journal. Um, in that particular year, Harriet Tubman comes back in the summer to try to get her brothers to come out. But they will not leave because, as Sidney Howard Gay has interpreted it, um, they felt ethically bound to the man that had hired them to keep them from being sold um, for that current year, 1854. But when the year was up, generally the contracts for, for a year's hiring were done in the Christmas week. So they assumed they were going to be sold in Christmas week, 1854. So Harriet Tubman came back one way or the other, whether through the aid of, of John Stewart, the son of Levin, or, or some other means, she came back to Dorchester County and she presumably hid out and had a letter that was sent apparently, uh, you know, since she couldn't read or write, it was sent by a 
an alleged relative of a black farmer and veterinarian that lived very near here named Jacob Jackson. And the letter was sent to him, but all the mail in the U.S. post offices in this area at that time were censored. So any mail coming to a black person was opened. Mm -hmm. So they got the letter in the post office back there at Madison or Tobacco State. And they called Jacob in and said, what does this letter mean? And basically the letter said that I, 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 I hope everything is going well. Uh, I'm up here um, and I'm doing well. And, and, and it said, and, and by the way, tell the old folks when the good old ship of Zion comes to get on board. Okay. And that was the coded message. Okay. To let mm -hmm. to let to let Jacob Jackson know okay. that Harriet Tubman was coming for her three brothers okay. in some prearranged plan. Okay. Now Sidney Howard Gay doesn't get into that, no. but that's described in Sarah Bradford in several different places, okay. and it's a great story. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think the that's why President Obama chose this area oh. for the National Monument because Jacob Jackson's farm is identifiable. Okay. It's back in the woods there. We can't go back there right now, but uh -huh. there's no building there. But mm -hmm. But Jacob Jackson lived there, and Stewart's Canal is here. Mm -hmm. They all took the alias of Stewart, so mm -hmm. the National Park Service decided, you know, we can't wait forever to have a national presence in Dorchester, and mm -hmm. we're going to do it that way. Oh, that's okay, so that's the story. Yeah. Okay.